welcome to this review of Hornby's N15 King Arthur Class number 771 Sir Sagamore. A little bit of history on the class then. Uh, it was originally designed by uh, Robert Urie of the LSWR to haul express trains from Waterloo uh, down to the West Country. Construction began in 1919 and 74 in total were built, divided into three subclasses. When the LSWR was amalgamated into the Southern Railway, in 1923, uh, the class were named with characters from the Arthurian legends, uh, earning them the nickname the King Arthur class. They operated large passenger trains all over the south of England and were the second most powerful engine on the Southern Railway, except for the Lord Nelson class. Uh, there's only one preserve, uh, which is number 777 uh, Sir Lamiel on the Great Central Railway, uh, but this model uh, here depicts number 771, which was one of the last in the class. Um, it was part of a batch built by the North British Railway uh, in Glasgow in June 1925 and it was retired from serv service in uh, November 1961. Uh, this locomotive had the bogey tender, as you can see there, um, with a greater capacity and it also has the larger extended cab roof. Uh, this is a Hornby model, as you can see, obviously. Um, it's a year or two old now. I picked it up last year at the Folkestone Model Railway Club's exhibition at the Leeds Cliff Hall. Um, if you're near there, I'd really recommend you go to that. There's always lots of fantastic layouts and um, great bargains like this as well. I uh, paid £110 for this, which is uh, great value for a, an almost unused locomotive. Um, so definitely go to exhibitions and things like that. You'll always find some, uh, some fantastic value. Uh, bargains. There's currently one in production, uh, currently at Hornby, uh, which is R3527, which is Camelot, which is in Southern Wartime Black, which retails at 175.99. Uh, so as you can see, I got quite a discount uh, with this. Well, the uh, the packaging is uh, very nice. You've got this nice sort of uh, sleeve design, uh, which we've, we've come to expect from Hornby today, uh, really. Uh, and of course, this is on the back, uh, there's the information, uh, which is, is basically what I just said. Um, uh, and yeah, that's, that's very nice to see. Um, you know, information on the back. You, uh, they did go for a, a phrase of uh, not putting that on the back. Uh, and actually, I really like it. I think it's quite uh, informative. And uh, especially if you're new to the hobby and you don't know much about the trains, uh, it's very good indeed. And the packaging itself... Um, it's this, uh, what's come to be known as the block of ice packaging, uh, inside uh, this box. And of course here we have all the uh, leaflets and what have you. Uh, so we have uh, the standard instruction leaflet, uh, which just tells you, tells you all you need to know about running trains and uh, removing the body, where to put the details, where to lubricate, that sort of thing. Uh, it's very nice. I should mention this is DCC fitted as well, actually, um, which is what this leaflet is for. So this has all the decoder uh, settings, CV values, that sort of thing. Um, I, I haven't used this at all yet, so uh, but that will become that will come in handy uh, when programming the decoder. And right, what have we got in this sleeve itself? Uh, well, if we open it up, we have just give me those uh, a box of a uh, uh, little bag of crew members, which I, I've painted myself. I really advise you use these Hornby uh, locomotive crew because they're they're really <laughs> quite good. Um, obviously, you get them free in the box, and then uh, they're not painted, obviously. But as soon as you paint them, it's fairly uh, they look quite good. Because um, then you can spend up to you know ten pounds on a pair of locomotive crew, and uh, that seems a bit of a waste of money to me when you get them free uh, in the bag here. And we also have a bag of details. So what have we got? We got brake rods, um, footsteps. I think yep for the front. Uh, some piping, uh, some some hoses for the buffer beam, and an extra NEM coupling. Uh, so that's all very nice. Okay, so uh, the model itself uh, is kept securely under all this uh, stuff. Uh, 
and I think it's coupled together so I'm going to lift it out carefully and oh no it isn't okay um, <laughs> okay then uh, and there we go just slide that out of the way right so if you look at the model then um, it is it is very finely detailed, detailed indeed uh, there's plenty of it and we'll just go through that now uh, so starting at the front the first thing that grabs you is the level of detail on the buffer beam uh, rivets absolutely everywhere you cannot move for the rivets on the buffer beam um, and absolutely loads of them and the uh, number is nicely picked out in yellow uh, the buffers are metal and they are sprung I am happy to report I like sprung buffers I think it adds an extra layer of realism to the model the smoke box door has um, some very nice detail there's a separately fitted handrail here um, and uh, lamp irons as well there's six of those as is standard on the southern railway um, and uh, more rivets um, around the front as well moving towards the side then uh, the cylinder here has a nice bit of detail on it uh, nicely painted and lined as well which is nice to see um, the motion here is nicely picked out nicely replicated um, uh, the wall shirts valve gear uh, nicely replicated in model form here the wheels are the correct color they match the locomotive which sometimes Hornby don't do so well um, but in this case they actually do appear to uh, match the locomotive in color um, which is correct uh, the boiler uh, side is, is, is very plain um, but I've done a bit of research and actually they were very plain um, there there weren't any rivets on them or anything um, so that that is true to prototype a uh, nice dome at the top here again very plain very much uh, a southern railway feature that was uh, a plain boiler um, running along the side we have a nice uh, handrail I think it's probably plastic but it's separately fitted uh, which is very nice uh, the clack valve here uh, is nicely picked out in uh, gold and the reverser is picked out in silver uh, which is a the line you just see along there. The nameplate is very nicely uh, detailed indeed. It, uh, it reads Sir Sagamore King Arthur class, um, which is uh, nice to see. I don't know if you can get, in fact, I think actually, I think that is actually a separately fitted uh, piece, the nameplate, which is nice to see because it's not just printed on. Uh, the pipework running alongside the uh, firebox then uh, is painted green until you get to the top when it uh, is is picked out in gold uh, which again I've, I've checked that and that's how they are done in real life um, and there's a nice whistle here which I think is probably plastic but it's uh, still gold so that's that's quite nice and uh, two brass safety valves uh, as well on the cap side uh, well underneath the cap side actually uh, there's some nice pipe work here um, and that's very nice indeed uh, on the cab side, there is a builder's plate here, which reads uh, Southern Railway E for Easterly uh, 771, which is nice to see. Uh, sometimes you can't really read them. Uh, that's nice. You can probably get um, brass etch ones on the internet somewhere. I haven't looked. Uh, and some more rivets here. And uh, that's very nice indeed. Quite a plain cab roof, but again, uh, that's true to prototype. Moving around to the cab then. Uh, I don't know whether you, how well you can see that. Uh, that's if I turn it towards the light. There we are. Um, inside the cab, there is an insane amount of detail. Um, every bit of detail is painted. Uh, all the pipe work is picked out in uh, in gold. Uh, the regulator, the reverser, they're all picked out in silver. Uh, there are red uh, handles here. The gauge glasses have printed uh, are printed on. The dials have printed numbers on. Uh, uh, the even the firebox door is silver. Um, that's very nice uh, to see on a on a on a locomotive of this age, uh, which is the model that the tooling's about uh, probably five or six years old now. Um, so it's nice to see. And of course, the cab is painted cream uh, because uh, the Southern Railway likes to paint their cabs cream. Looking at the tender then. Um, the tender uh, is is basic, uh, but is uh, true to prototype. It's, it does sound a little bit plasticky. Uh, just feel feel a little bit um, light, perhaps could do with a bit more weight, perhaps. Um, 
But nonetheless, uh, it's a nice paint finish. Uh, there's nice numbering here uh, and lettering. And the lining, of course, is, is very crisp. The uh, two bogies are well detailed. Uh, they've got rivets on, leaf springs, uh, axle boxes. They're all very well detailed indeed. Uh, and on oh goodness me, uh, sorry, my my coal load's just fallen out. Well, uh, it's got a removable coal load um, as well, and there's rivets all around the top of the tender as well. Uh, the two uh, water filler caps um, are nicely detailed too. Looking at the back, then uh, there is uh, some nice lamp irons, uh, six of them. Uh, and a brake hose as well, which is uh, which is nice to see. Buffers again are sprung, and there is a, uh, a hook here. Uh, there is also a NEM pocket uh, for you to fit a coupling uh, of your choice. Um, I think it comes pre-fitted um, with a small slimline tension lock coupler. Uh, and that's that's about it uh, for the detail. Apart from the cab side, uh, where there's a brake wheel um, which isn't painted, I don't know whether that's um, prototypical or not. Um, and as I said, the coal load is uh, removable, uh, which is nice because that's, that doesn't happen enough. I haven't actually uh, run this model to my shame at all, uh, but I have uh, seen similar models running and they run very smoothly. Um, obviously, you'd need to uh, keep it uh, regularly serviced, regularly oiled, uh, maybe just get it checked over once or twice a year uh, just to make sure everything's running okay. Obviously, don't run them on carpet, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, but yes, I think from what I've seen, uh, the mechanism appears to be very smooth. I think it's a five pole motor. Um, so, yeah, that's all very good. Uh, performance then. To my shame, uh, I haven't actually run this model uh, at all. Um, but I have seen similar models running and they appear very smooth. Obviously, you need to service it, keep it oiled. Um, maybe get it checked out once or twice a year just to make sure everything's okay uh, but the mechanism from what I've seen appears to be very smooth, very good I think the five pole motor which is uh, sort of the the premium motor you can get um, and yeah it, it appears to run very smoothly from what I've seen in conclusion uh, this model is quite pricey as I said 175 uh, 99 for uh, not an enormous uh, train uh, it's fairly large but not enormous um, but it is ideally suited to anybody who has a layout and sit in the south of England, anywhere between sort of 1920 and 1960 really. Um, I mean it's got great detail, from what I've seen it has a smooth motor um, and the, you know, the paint finish is, is impeccable. Um, so the model is definitely good value. Um, if you have that money and you want one, uh, you definitely should, especially if it suits your layout, uh, it is definitely a good purchase. Um, I would definitely advise you buy it if you have uh, a layout set in the south of England at all, um, really. Um, I don't see why you wouldn't get one.